In this video, I want to talk a little bit about fascia and fascia having a memory and what that might look like and how it works and my observations as a massage therapist um, and kind of really understanding how this happens or, or observing how this happens in someone's body. So um, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but after college, um, I did not go to med school or grad school or even um, become a high school biology teacher, all of which were um, doors open for me as I you know, graduated from, from undergrad. And instead, I went to massage therapy school. And I don't really know why. I'd never gotten a massage before I went to massage therapy school. I had never gotten a massage. It was something was just drawing me to go to massage therapy school and observe the body in a different way. And so um, I did, right? I enrolled in a very great massage therapy program here uh, in the town that I that I live in. Um, and it was a two-year program. And I would say probably, you know, fairly shortly into it, we were introduced to the concept of acupressure. And I loved acupressure. I loved receiving acupressure. And I loved giving acupressure to people. And the concept of acupressure is that you kind of um, search around on someone's body for a thick or dense place. You know, it's a very, it typically feels like a dense muscle or a dense bit of connective tissue. And you apply sustained pressure, typically with the tip of your thumb, you apply sustained pressure to that part. And then what I loved about this was that as I applied sustained pressure, my thumb would, would almost, it would feel like the tissue beneath my thumb would melt. And as it melted, it would sink a little bit deeper and soften. And it would, and then you would come to another hard point, right? Another tr true physical stoppage point uh, in the body. So I view that as like a really, another really dense portion of that tissue. And then you hold the pressure long enough and it would soften and it would soften. And I could hold acupressure points for five minutes, even, even longer, right? And just continue to soften and get in deeper and deeper. And I always wanted to know what was happening. Um, at massage therapy school, they told me that, you know, the heat of my hand I think was, was potentially softening the muscle and bringing new blood flow in. And, and that was interesting, but I just didn't feel like that's what I was experiencing. I was experiencing a legitimate um, melting melting of a tissue it felt just complete transformation and it wasn't gradual that was the interesting thing too it wasn't like a just a very steady uh, linear slowly slowly over the course of minutes sinking in it was a you find a barrier and then when I would hold that barrier I would hold that boundary that's that stiffness and then kind of almost all of a sudden after a certain amount of time it would melt and I would sink a little bit deeper and hold that that boundary that 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 um, tense tissue, and all of a sudden it would melt. And so there was almost definitely a releasing effect happening. And as I start, as I studied more and more about the body, about hydration, um, did more massage, I dug deeper and deeper into this. And what I found was the work of Dr. Carla Stecco. She is a researcher over in Italy, and she really was the first person to recognize that the fascia has its own cells called fascia sites that produce a substance called hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid's job is to pull water into it and plump things up right? So that's what happened. That's why hyaluronic acid is in beauty products, right? Because you want to pull it into wrinkles maybe and plump the wrinkles out. Well, that same thing is happening inside of us in our fascia, in our connective tissue. And th those fascia sites are stimulated by pressure, compression. It's one of the signals that causes those fascia sites to start to make more hyaluronic acid that then gets the water that pulls the surrounding water into it. And that has a softening effect to the tissue. And so it's, I've, I experienced that exact same thing now. So, so how does this tie to memory? Like what's going on here? Well, there were multiple times as a massage therapist, I don't practice massage anymore, but there were multiple times, both in massage therapy school and a practicing massage therapist that I would be holding an acupressure point on someone's body. And all of a sudden a softening would happen. And as that softening happened, the client would emote really unexpectedly. Sometimes it was would be tears. Sometimes it would be like just laughter, like they would just laugh. Sometimes as that softening effect happened, I would get a memory in my brain um, that wasn't my own. Uh, it would be something like a car accident or um, 
a fall, right? Or, or even like the, the idea of being on a sports field, um, I would get this memory of something. And I stopped, I, at first I didn't, didn't do anything with it, but I eventually started asking the client if I felt comfortable, you know, Hey, you know, did, were you ever in a car accident? Do you ever, did you ever have an injury on the, on the sports field? And they would say, how'd you know? Like, I never put that in my intake. How'd you know? Um, and it was a fascinating thing to be like, is it possible that as this tissue rehydrates with water, a memory is released, a memory is released. Um, and I truly believe that's the case. Um, I believe that fascia, uh, uh, number one, first and foremost, I know that water stores memory. Water has memory to it. Water can be, it can interact. And, and, and that, that, I mean, homeopathy is one of the most, the most, um, I guess, classical examples of water memory in that you can put a substance into water shake it up together and then start to dilute that substance until no more substance is physically in the water anymore, but the vibrational memory of that substance is. And that vibrational memory then can be consumed and it can have an effect on the body, um, very similar to if the substance was there. And so, um, and so, or you, sometimes there's an opposite effect. There's a, there's a little bit of a, a slightly different effect with, with, with homeopathy. But that being said, um, it was, it made me start to think like, okay, water has a memory. I've studied beta Austin's work. So what's going on in the body? I have a feeling that what the body does when there is a trauma, physical trauma or emotional trauma, and that gets, it does get encoded in the water network of our bodies. And because our fascia is such a continuous network of water and our fascia is a liquid crystal, liquid crystals are actually really um, being utilized these days as data storage mechanisms, um, just in technology in general. Uh, and so that, that, and what's really fascinating about liquid crystals, researchers for forever were trying to figure out how that how they could make a rewritable memory device. And liquid, they, they, they did this using a specific, using a liquid crystalline sub, um, substance. So what they did was they found a liquid crystalline substance that was in like a rod-like, polymer, right? Basically a long linkage of repeating molecules. And they figured out that they were, they created the first rewritable memory device utilizing this liquid crystalline structure. I'm thinking, wait a second, what is the collagen in our body? If not these long tendrils or triple helices of polymers, right? We, they, it is, it, that is a repeating polymer inside of our bodies. And collagen makes up the majority of the protein in our body. It's collagen. And so wouldn't it be fascinating if the collagen itself and the water that surrounds it, both of which are liquid crystalline, have the ability to be data storage or memory storage, and then we can rewrite it or we can release it and we can move that memory so that it doesn't necessarily cause a jarring resonance in someone's tissues. And so that's really where I started to recognize, wow, I think what's happening as I'm releasing a, a storage point here, um, I, or a, a stiff point here, some stiff tissue, dense tissue, and we get that softening, we're actually refreshing the hydration, the liquid crystalline state of the connective tissue. And we're accessing the memory that's associated with that particular part of the body. And in my viewpoint, energy needs to move. A memory or an emotion, they need to move. And how do they move? I believe they move through our biofield, hence why memories can get stuck in a biofield as well. That would be Eileen McCusick's work. Fascinating if you haven't looked into biofield tuning, um, specifically her body, uh, electric body, electric health is a fascinating read on this. And I believe memories can get stored in this biofield. And but they also then the biofield information goes back through us in a toroidal fashion and that it's meant to flow, but it's not meant to be stuck. And if we can, and I think the, the way that the body kind of protects itself is it almost walls off a traumatic memory, a traumatic experience by dehydrating the fascia. And, and so if that's the case, it's like, yes, we're holding a trauma here, but we don't want to remember it. It says we don't want, we don't want to worry about it. We don't want to, we don't want to have that resonance necessarily, but you want to move it. And so we can rehydrate the fascia. And as we rehydrate the fascia, things can move and things can flow again and we can process our memories. 
And I do believe our fascia all the time is receiving information as, as a liquid crystal. It's receiving information from inside of our body, the different types of sounds and frequencies and vibrations that are produced inside of the body. And it's receiving information from the outside of the body as well. And it's utilizing that to help my body adapt in real time. But it is rewritable, right? So we can let it move and let it flow. And so that's the whole thing is I think a very hydrated connective tissue um, is one that we can still store memories, but they don't get lodged and stuck in a way that can cause either pain, discomfort, or actually a chaotic resonance, a chaotic pattern there that could ultimately create more downstream, you know, dysfunction at the cellular level. And so how can we go about potentially making sure our fascia is, is hydrated? Well, I'm a big fan of foam rolling and myofascial release. Um, I have went through a program through Functional Patterns, a 10-week program by a company called Functional Patterns, where they use some really targeted foam rolling it, as a means of helping one's body develop biomechanical efficiency. But what's been fascinating about observing case studies that they put on their social media accounts is that people come to them potentially with a movement challenge, let's say scoliosis, or let's say... Um, Parkinson's disease, right? And it's amazing how through rehydrating the fascia and retraining the body's movement patterns, that diseases, clinical disease states can be lessened. Um, and so to me, when we're rehydrating the fascia, we reestablish this beautiful communication and flow and what we would call coherence in the body. And so if you, so, I mean, obviously that functional patterns program is great. That 10 week program, I've actually have um, clients who lo love the uh, working in person with functional patterns practitioners. They, they say it's the best thing that they can possibly do. They love it. Um, and so that's great as well. If you have access to that, but if you don't, and you just have something like a foam roller, don't hesitate to just get on the foam roller and play around with spots that might feel dense. Or if you can regularly get massage, ask the massage therapist to find those acupressure points that might feel stuck, right? They might feel like lumps or, or stiff or dense and ask them to spend a good time just holding those points to have that softening effect take place. And always, as always, make sure you're very hydrated too. These days we're in a world where um, we're being bombarded by a lot of electromagnetic frequencies that really can can dehydrate us and also just um, just be damaging to the water inside of our bodies. And so we just make have to make sure we're replenishing ourselves with hydration using pure water, structured, remineralized, you know, w whenever possible. That's ideal. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of my take on fascia, fascia holding memory, and it has everything to do with the beautiful liquid crystalline properties of both the fascia itself and the water that surrounds it and how we can get those memories moving, especially the traumatic memories, it seems are the ones that get stuck and we can get those memories moving again through the biofield, through the body so that they're not anchoring in any tissue and potentially causing, um, a resonance dysfunction to accumulate. So Okay, I hope that made sense. Uh, just an interesting little take on some of my observations, but I'd love to hear what you have to say.